good morning, everybody. So thrilled that you're on today. Happy September 8th. Most of you probably are in your full swing of the fall, and so looking forward to uh, this season just as people and as people who love God. So I know that there's a lot that God has in store for you. When new seasons happen, I do like to look at uh, the fresh things that God wants to speak to us. And so maybe you haven't quite thought about that yet, but maybe start thinking about that. What's God want to speak to me in this season? Not that, you know, it's it's going to be, oh, this this big transforming life affecting thing, but maybe there's something small that God's speaking to you that you can implement into your life. Maybe there's something that he wants to speak to you through his word or through prayer and Maybe putting some more time towards prayer, more time towards the word will help in hearing his voice. And so before we open up today, we'll pray and then we'll get into the word. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your voice. I thank you that you still speak to us today. I thank you, God, that you have great things in store for each and every person. God, the people who are watching, the people who all also can't be on today, we ask for your guidance, your direction, your peace in this life. God, we ask for us to see what you're revealing to us in every situation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We wanted to wrap up the uh, series we've been on, Wisdom from the Book of Job. And so looking forward to just touching on some of the things that we can learn from Job's suffering experience If you haven't um, read the book of Job, read it. And if you want to hear the the background of some things maybe that you don't see in the scripture, you can go back and watch some of the videos that we did. This is, I believe, will be the fourth video. So you can go back to part one, two, three, and catch up. And then, of course, you're on watching today. But I want to look at what did God reveal to Job in the first part of this message? God revealed something about his friends. Now, I know we talk a lot about friends' influence on our life when we're growing up, when we're younger adults, when we're teenagers. But as adults, we also need to know what God's revealing about the people we surround ourselves with. Because Job's friends were counseling him without true knowledge. They were not counseling him with God-revealed knowledge. They were counseling him out of their human perspective. And I know a lot of people today want and need someone to talk to, whether it's a friend, whether it's a family member, whether it's a professional um, counselor. And we have to be careful to surround ourselves with people that are speaking out of the wisdom of God, speaking out of the principles of God, especially when we're going through tough times. Now, there's general, you know, wisdom that a lot of people do have just from living life. And so that doesn't mean we discount everything, excuse me, somebody says, because maybe they're not a a believer. But we do need to be careful who we, who our close circle is and what kind of counsel and input we receive into our life. That's a big one. God also revealed something about Job to himself. Or I'm sorry, he revealed something about himself to Job. I just read that backwards. So God revealed himself more to Job. He revealed in the midst of suffering how great and how powerful and how majestic God is. The conversations that God has with Job in the book of Job is pretty amazing if you go read through that. Job was a man who lived a very principled, God-honoring life and was pleasing to the Lord. But he still lacked a full understanding of God's person and nature. God used Job's material possessions to bring him to an understanding of God's power and majesty. God can do as he wills. God will often sacrifice the external to deal with the internal. God will willingly sacrifice the external to deal with the internal. 
And none of Job's friends, even his wife, couldn't understand this. <clears throat> they offered every human reason for what was happening to Job, but God's desire was simply to bring Job into a closer personal relationship with him. And unfortunately, this could only happen if Job had a greater revelation of God's true greatness and power in suffering and in success. When God spoke to Job in the final chapters, Job got that revelation. He understood how powerful, how mighty, how, <clears throat> how majestic God truly is. And even though that's tough for us to understand that God wants to use our suffering in the seasons of trials to reveal more of his greatness, because it, it doesn't make sense to our human mind when we think, oh, if I wanted to reveal how great I am to people, I would bless them with, you know, how, however much I could bless them with, or I would give them gifts, or I would do this, or I would do that. We think if we want to display greatness, we got to display goodness, but God has a different way of getting to our hearts because he knows if we're just always given things, then that's what we expect and we kind of take it for granted. And so sometimes he has to shift gears to get our attention and to show a different side of faith in our life and in our walk. And speaking of faith, what was the end result of the trial of Job's faith? Well, here we have, when Job saw God's greatness, he saw his own weakness or smallness. But there's some things that were produced out of that. Job had a deeper relationship to God. In Job 42, 5, it says, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. What a, <clears throat> excuse me, what a deep thought that I've heard of you. So before he's saying, even when he was the most righteous man on, on earth before all this happened, he said, I've heard of you, but now I see you. Second thing is Job had greater, greater power with God. And I'll explain this here. Job 42.10, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had had before. Even though Job's friends, in, in essence, tore him down during this time, <clears throat> Job prayed for them. God listened to his prayers. God restored his losses and had twice as much as he had before. Thanks, Duncan. This is not a commercial. <clears throat> Job experienced restoration and blessing. In Job 42, 12, we see how God restored and blessed him. <clears throat> and we see when we, when we respond properly to the dealings of God, they will always bring us into a deeper relationship with him and greater spiritual blessing. It's all about our response how well we respond. It's not always what happens to you, <clears throat> but how we respond to what happens to us. And I just want to look at this, um, this kind of chart here that I have. And it's a note about Job's life before the test and then after the test of suffering. So before the test, he was 70 years old. After the test, he was 140 years old. What a season of testing. My goodness. Before the test, he had seven sons. After the test, he had seven additional sons. Now, his sons and daughters did die in the testing, so God gave him what he had lost. Before the test, Job had three daughters. After the test, he had three additional daughters. Before the test, Job had 7,000 sheep. After, he had 14,000 sheep. Before the test, 
3,000 camels. After, he had 6,000 camels. Before, he had 5,000 yoke of oxen. After, he had 1,000 yoke of oxen. Before, he had 500 donkeys. After, he had 1,000 donkeys. Before, he was blessed. Afterwards, he was doubly blessed. So, we see God's hand in restoring what Job had, and it took a while. It was, it was seven more decades that all of this came into his life. Now, most of us will not live to 140 unless the Lord wills that. But if you've been in a season where you've lost and you've been in trial and you've been in suffering, God has a plan to restore it. Just keep serving him. Keep your eyes on him. Keep understanding that he's got a plan and a purpose. Surrender to him. Give everything over to him and he will take care of you. Job is a great picture of God coming through at the end of suffering, at the end of trials. And I want to look at what, do, what does the book of Job really teach us about suffering. Job gives a balanced picture of suffering. There are many wrong concepts about suffering. We can think that all trouble and pressure and affliction is from the devil. That's a wrong concept. We can also think that all trouble, pressure, affliction can be dispelled if we have enough faith. That's a big one in our <clears throat> faith Christian culture today is that if we have enough faith, this problem will go away. We have to have enough faith to go through the problems, but God doesn't promise enough faith is going to dispel those problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. There it is. We cannot dispel all suffering. And then Acts 14, 22 says, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Again, it's how do we respond? Do we respond in faith when we go through troubles? Or do we try to build up enough faith to say, I will never have troubles? If you ever have heard or believed a gospel that says, if you have enough faith, your problems will go away. That's misworded and misguided. If you have enough faith, you'll, you'll go through your problems and you'll see God through it. And there's a lot more concepts taught in the book of Job. There's suffering in the world that's not the result of sin or the sin of the sufferer's parents. Because in the, in the Bible, it said, you know, you will, the sins will follow from generation to generation down to four generations. Well, <clears throat> this is not a result of that. The suffering that you go through will not always be understood by you or anyone else around you is another concept we get out of Job. The suffering that God sends are to lead to our growth and development. Now, the suffering that God sends lead to our growth and development. And we can read in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. The suffering that God sends are to prepare you to be more useful vessels in which he can channel more and greater blessings through. And so we have to understand that God is using the seasons of suffering. Now, sometimes we can explain why we're suffering. Like somebody who, I'm, I'm drawing a blank of what to think of, but somebody who gets in a car and is driving drunk and gets in a wreck or kills somebody or kills themselves, that was something, a direct result of a decision they made. Or if you, you know, decide to do something that's going to break your leg or break an arm, 
that's some suffering that has a direct result of something that you decided to do. So, or if you spent all your money before rent was due and now you're suffering because you don't, you didn't budget well, that that's a direct result of a decision you made and some things you missed along the way. So there is suffering that happens when we aren't living according to principle and wisdom. Those do happen. I'm not saying all suffering is from God. And there's some attacks on our life. There's sickness. There's disease in this world. But when suffering comes that we cannot explain, we need to present it to God. We need to surrender to God and say, Lord, use this season to mold me, shape me, help me look to you. Even in the times when it's suffering that that we produced ourselves, so to speak, whether it's we spent our own, all our money before rent was due and all this stuff, still present it to God, apologize, God, I'm sorry, and but then get help to get better in that area. Surrender it to God and be open to counsel and wisdom and how you can move forward in those areas. But God does want to prepare us. He wants to prepare us for more. And if you're going through a season of suffering, know that that season is preparing you for more that God has for you. So that's that's our overview of the book of Job. Um, and that will be the last message on it for, for this season. But I hope that you are filled with faith to be able to go through various trials. James, the book of James says, count it all joy when you go through various trials because the testing of your faith produces endurance. And as we endure, we, we endure to receive the prize of the upward call. And that is seeing God clear, that seeing him for who he truly is. That's him pouring out his blessing upon us. And it might not always be material, but there is promises of material blessing in the word of God. And so we all can learn from the book of Job. And I encourage you again, if you have not read through it, maybe do a devotional. You can probably find a devotional on it, on U uh, version. You could also just read the, the book of Job and underline what speaks to you, write down in a journal what speaks to you. But with that being said, I want to wrap up this series. Thank you for being on today. Before we go, just always want to give us the opportunity to give unto the Lord, to give our tithes, our offerings. Maybe it's a donation you want to give today. But whatever it is, we give unto the Lord with a cheerful heart. It says, uh, God loves a cheerful giver. And so as we give, we can be cheerful about it because as we're sowing into the kingdom of God, we're giving unto the Lord, especially if we're tithing and we're even going above and beyond the tithe. God promises to bless that type of giving. He, he blesses what we give unto him. And I want to challenge you, if you are watching today, maybe you've never been connected to a live church or maybe you're a part of another church. And if you, if you don't tithe, I, I challenge you to, to try it. Try tithing 10% of your income and sow into the kingdom of God and see how God comes through for you. But for those who uh, normally tithe and give to a live church, you can give at alivechurchnyc.com slash give. The link um, is in the description below if you need that. And God bless you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the, the fall season starting to kick off. Uh, and we will see you next Sunday.